For this presentation, I will be discussing the Western Electric 1234G payphone. These payphones are quite rare and they're very expensive due to the rarity of them being a touchstone phone. I made a previous video showing a 1234 that was in a museum that I was working in. And this is a phone that I very recently acquired and I own this unit. I have had to do some work on it, cleaning it up and repairing it. So I have a monitor speaker connected to the line and this is a coin first payphone which is connected to a ground start phone line. When you go off hook you do not receive dial tone until there is a coin deposit. This phone is set up for 10 cent operation so you must require a deposit of at least 10 cents to get dial tone. I will use a quarter because that's what I have handy right now. I will call a number on the workbench so you will hear when the handset goes off hook there will be a slight change in the noise on the line then when the dial tone uh, when I deposit the coin to dial tone you will hear the functions of it in the dial tone and then when I hang up you will hear what the line sounds like as the central office equipment is returning the coin. I will remove the upper housing and show the insides of the phone as it's working. I have a cable that is an extension cable so I can have the upper housing removed and place calls without the phone actually assembled. Normally the cord inside the phone is only four inches long and you cannot do this but I do have an extension cable. With the upper housing removed you can see the inside of the phone. So I will again go off hook and deposit a coin. However, the coin must be deposited inside the hopper. The inside of the upper housing has the coin mechanism in it, but since that is not sitting on the phone, at this point it will not do anything. The coin relay needs a little bit of adjustment that I haven't done yet. I will zoom in on the coin mechanism or the hopper assembly. Since I did not deposit an actual coin, I just operated the flap on the coin relay, I would deposit a coin and then hang, uh, call the number and answer it and hang up and the coin would be then deposited into the coin box.
here's the inside of the upper housing with the coin mechanism inside of it. The relay that you see up here in the top is used for the 10 cent service. And then we have the spring that when the quarter is deposited, you operate the spring or the coin would hit the spring. And then we have the gong, so if it's a single nickel, you'll get one ding. If it's two nickels, you'll get a double ding. Or if it's a dime, you will get a double ding. With the mechanism leaning forward, it does not function very well because it wants to be perfectly vertical. The inside of the upper housing, the coin mechanism, is identical to a 233 style rotary dial phone. The only exception is we have the touch tone pad oscillator in a, con a nice sealed in, uh, package here. And it has a 12 pin connector on it because of all of the additional wires. And the touch tone pad is mounted behind the coin mechanism. The main part of the phone is identical to a 233 with the exception it's got a wiring harness that is for a touch tone phone. It also has a small terminal board here for some extra wires and the top unit here has a capacitor or a resistor behind here that's part of the circuitry. Otherwise the lower housing and the back plate is the same as a 233. The relay is the same as a 233. And other than the wiring of it, um, this could easily be converted to a 233 backplane if needed. Here is a close-up of the hopper. I would deposit some coins so you can hear what the operator would have heard if they would have dialed zero for an operator and wanted to pay for the call after it was completed. I have a monitor speaker on the phone line, so the lower sounding tone you heard was the ring back tone uh, and the ringing generator, the 105 volts that was actually ringing the bell inside of the telephone. And you also heard the bell in the phone ring. So this is what the phone would have sounded like if you were to call it uh, and or if you were by it. This concludes the video for the Western Electric 1234G. These phones go for at least $1,000 and up, and there are very few of them out there. This was when Touchtone was in the very early stages of being deployed, so you would only find these in areas that had a number one crossbar with Touchtone, or a number five crossbar switching system with touch tone, or a very early number one ESS switching machine. Here is the 685 network and bell. This is mounted directly below the phone. For this video, I have this sitting upside down with the phone off the workbench so I could display how it worked. Normally, these would be mounted and wired on a wall. I will be mounting this in my payphone display uh, in the future.